You ready for a bit of fishing, Moose? Hey. Give it. Give it in. Helps if you unlock the bands. Alrighty guys, the journey's underway. We've got me and Bandit ready to go. He's just having a little chill time in the van. I've just grabbed a couple of scores of lug from Channel Angling, so I've made it as far as Dover. And I'm gonna drive on to Deal. We're gonna drive a little bit past Deal Pier into a secret location. And I'm gonna have a good old fish there. So I've got about 25 minutes till I get there. Let's make it happen. Oh, me and the pooch are down on the mark now. Just gonna get all the trolley loaded up and drag it down there and get fishing. Uh, pretty strong west southwest breeze coming on around me, but hopefully you should mainly be at my back Maybe a little bit over my right shoulder, but we'll see. Hopefully it'll be fishable Anyway, stop wasting time. He wants to get going. So do I. Let's do this I'm out here now. I don't know if you can hear the wind around me, but it's a pretty stiff breeze But the trolley's all loaded Just a normal moving trolley that I bought from Screwfix from Callister It's not a proper beach one, but it does the job Pooch is ready, rods are ready and the tent, let's get going. Here we go again, we're down on the mark now. Nice and beautiful day. Got my Shibu ready to get his tent set up and his bed. Yeah, it's a bit windy. West southwest is cutting from this way. So it's gonna give it a bit of a slant on the old lines, but I reckon we'll be all right. Anyway, now start getting set up and I'll bring you back. All right guys, this is the spot that I'm fishing on. So you can see my gear up there. Bandit trudging back to the tent. He won't be happy till I get a fish up. Anyway, I'm at the low tide now. And you can see just at the edge of the water line where the waves are breaking, it slopes down again. And it plateaus out a little bit and it goes for a nice big slope and then it plateaus out again so that's kind of the shape of this area now while it's at the low tide i'm going to use clip down rigs i'm going to try blast whatever bait i'm using as far as i can out there to try and get into some deeper water and actually get some fish but as the tide comes in i've noticed at this venue you can overcast the fish just below where that ridge is where my gear is on top of is where the tide line will come to so all of this big dip will be underwater. Uh, I found if you blast it out, you can overcast the fish and you can actually get more at this venue by dropping them short. So I'm gonna bear that in mind later when the tides come in. Right, okay, I've got two rods set up now and I might set up a further in a bit if I'm feeling greedy later. Uh, let's turn you around. Right, yo, so stand, two rods on it. Two rods are used all the time. A Continental Vercelli and a 13 foot Shakespeare. Now on the Continental, I've opted for a Frio pulley. So you can see the pulley bead up there. And it's attached onto a breakaway styly splash down down here. So when that hits the water, Boom, that plastic gets forced up and the rig detaches. Leave that there a moment. Now that's a five ounce gripper weight. You can see the wires on it. Uh, for the moment, I've just put a lovely big black lug on there. I picked up from channel this morning uh, because my frozen bait's still a bit frozen. So I've got some squids and blueies in a cool bag over there. Get them out in a bit, but yeah, Frio hook on a pulley panel. Uh, not even a panel, just a pulley actually. My mistake. Oh, I banned it. I'm sure we'll get a fish in a minute. Just checking the bucket, make sure I ain't got one already. Snuck it in there. Not yet, mate. Right, then on the 13 footer, I have a two up, one down. Let's try and get that to focus. There we go, two up, one down. And it's a clip down rig. Now the way you make one of these, you've got to manufacture this little bit yourself out of a bit of earth cable casing, I think one millimeter, 
and a bit of a paper clip. Now what you do, you take this snood below the weight, you take him up, wrap him over that hook, get you to focus again, over that hook and then back down onto the imp system. The one above clips onto the imp system and then the one above that just clips onto a cascade swivel that you can see there. Anyway, that's what we've got set up at the moment. I'm going to blast him out and try to get a fish to make the dog happy. He's getting antsy, he's seeing other dogs and he's trying to start fights. It's not a good bandit, mate. We came here fishing to relax. Oh, you're so rude. All right, let's get some baits out there. Well, let's get them both clipped back together and let's blast them out there. Another quick thing that's worth a mention about this rig. Can you see at the top there, I've got a little silicone grippy bead and then a sequin on top. Now that just stops your bait flying up the snood in the cast. So if you do a powerful cast with a clip down rig, you can see your bait end up sliding up the snoods. But yeah, little silicone bead. Come on, focus. Camera don't want to focus, but anyway, little silicone bead and a sequin. Keep your bait in place. So here we go. Bottom snood up over that little manufactured bit there. Then back down to the imp, the one above, measured out just the right distance to connect to the imp as well. And then the one above that, clip to that cascade swivel around there. There we go. Right, let's blast this rig out there. And we'll get this one clipped down, we'll do the same. Another quick mention before I actually cast out, guys. I've just had all of my reels serviced by TH Reel Servicing in Eastry. So Pen Surf Blaster 2, she's a couple of years old. Pen Battle 3, she's one years old. And uh, he's taken them all apart, he's greased everything up, made sure there's no broken parts. And they've come back looking lovely. So I've re them. Absolutely can't wait to use my reels today. First time out since they've been serviced. I'll let you know how I'll get on with them, but I'm sure they're going to perform even better than normal. Well, right guys, got two rods set up. Uh, and I think I'm going to sit down and have a little bit of lunch. It's coming up to lunchtime. Bandit's all snug as a bag in a rug. He's got his water, his raw chicken, his biscuits down there. That's what he's got for lunch. And me, I'll have two Tesco's meal deals because I'm a fatty. Uh, I can see quite a bit of movement going on on that Conti rod already, but I think it might just be slapped about by the wind a little bit. But that's all right. We'll know when we got a fish on it will really pull down. Uh, didn't quite get that 13 footer as uh, far as I wanted it. I was trying a different casting style to me normally when I was doing an off the ground. I usually just overhead thump it because I've got a decent overhead thump on me. But um, yeah, trying to play about with different casting styles and uh, learn a few things. Obviously it's just me and the dog at the moment, got the beach all to ourselves, a few people walking up on the walkway up there, but I'm the only angler here, I'll show you down that way, and my buddy Simon might come and join me in about an hour or two depending on whether he gets his car fixed or not. Anyway, I'm going to have my Sarnie, and hopefully we'll start seeing some bites soon. I didn't even finish a meal deal when I think I can see a bite. Now oh, it's on the shoulder rod. I zoom in on that tip there. And it seems like a jiggly pull down rather than just getting blown about. It's gone a bit still for the moment. I don't, yeah, don't know if you just saw that. Anyway, it seems like it's got just a tad more than the wind blowing on it. Although you can probably hear that wind rattling through. It's damn strong. Let's get back into what's left of the, uh, the IMAX shelter. So I've had this for about two years and she's starting to uh, give up the ghost. A few things ripped and torn here and there, but it's still just about going but I think I'm definitely due for an upgrade soon. 
that's getting here. You might be able to hear me better out the wind. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I don't know what you guys think is the uh, best beach shelter out there. I'll keep on looking at the Ian Gold's Big Lou. Um, it seems like it might have the most room. It seems to have pretty good reviews. Uh, my mate has a Shakespeare salt, I think. They're, they're a relatively good shelter. Um, you can just about squeeze two anglers in there at a push, which is good. Um, but I think they're a little bit more difficult to get up and get set up than one of these IMAX Storm ones. Um, but yeah, I don't really know how the Ian Gold's Big Lou goes up. Is it easy to put up? Do let us know in the comments if you know. Or if you have any other fantastic beach shelters that I might not know about, do let me know. That rod tip is definitely giving me a jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. I think there's a fish there. I'm not going to jump on it, though. There's three hooks on that rig. I'll try to get a full rig before I reel in. Now, that rod as well, I only put a five-ounce plain lead weight on there, so should be able to roll around a bit, try to get into some gullies, and hopefully scout out where the fish are. I said I had a bit of a miscast on it. I blasted it way further right than I wanted to. When I was doing a bit of off-the-ground casting practice, but um, it seems like it's landed in a fishy spot anyway. I'll try to finish my meal deal off, and then we'll have a little reel in and see what might be on the other end. All right, just bouncing around on the right rod's got me intrigued. It's time for the first reel in of the day. Wish he's ready. What do you reckon, bandit fish? You reckon it's fish? Let's find out. Right guys, first cast has produced fish down the bottom there. I've got a tiny little pouting and up the top I've got a tiny little whiting. Now very small but both of these are perfect size for a live bait so I'm going to stick them in the bucket for the moment. Yeah buddy. Alright, oh, the 3-0 pulley panel has also produced a nice tiny little whiting. So plenty of small fry in the water. I think I might try to use them as bait. Right, well, time to do what I've come to do. So, pack a bluey here. I've got one out, locked his head off, and I've cut myself out a nice, pretty long bait there, which is a chunk that you can see in the middle. Uh, I switched the 3 0 pulley rig off for a 4 0 pulley panel. So, two hooks in line, slightly bigger. And I'm going to blast it out there. And I'm going to hope to catch a form back ray, because I know a few have come out in this area pretty recently. Just noticed another angler starting to sit up down the beach there. Good luck to him. Anyway, let's get this bait on there. And I'll show you what that looks like and we'll send it out there. All right, here we go. Is the bait all made up. Bottom hook sitting nice and proud. Top hook just about poking out, but it's more for securing the bait. Let's clip it on and blast it out there. Right, a bit mean, I know, but... Uh, after a couple of minutes in the bucket, you can see who was the more lively looking bait fish. So that whiting, he's pretty much most of the way dead if I'm gonna chuck him back in a minute. But that pouty over there, he's nice and lively. So, got a hook for his nose. I'm gonna chuck him out as a live bait. Right, so just one whiting on that reel in. Uh, I'm gonna try dropping it a bit closer in. Cause I did put a good whack on that one. And I've caught less fish for it. So yeah, I'm going to try dropping a bit shorter this time, but I'm going to get this one de-hooked and back in the sea uh, before the dog gets any more ideas. Right, I don't know how the pulley panel's doing out there, but I'm about to reel it in, but just before I did, I made myself a nice little cocktail bait there. So that's a bit of bluey and a nice chunk of squid. Relatively aerodynamic. Hopefully that will attract the target species. Anyway, let's get that rod in and see how it's doing. Well, that was pretty gutting. Uh, I started to reel in and I could feel something giving it a bit of a pullback. It felt quite heavy, so I was thinking I might have been onto my target species, which was a ray. I fortunately got it in about 30, 40 yards and I just hit a snag. Tried going left, tried going right to free it, but in the end I snapped off. So that's what I'm left with, a bit of dangling line. Uh, it's part and parcel of fishing. I didn't particularly know about any snags here every time I fished here before. I've never snagged up, so 
yeah, I don't know if uh, any of the recent storms have changed the seabed up here a little bit. Anyway, I'll stop moaning. I'll get another leader line tied on and a new rig and we'll get that bait on that I just made. Uh, if you look down there, a few anglers have set up down that way. And I'm wondering if they know something that I don't about the snag here. But all I'm going to do, I'm going to try blast it towards them just a little bit, but just over towards the left. Because when I snagged up, I was like, just to the right of my hand a little bit. Anyway, let's get on with it. Right, all prepared and ready to go. Wait there, wait there. Tape a little line here. Don't worry, fish, there's plenty more where that came from. All right, let's get it out there and see if we can't actually get a ray up on this beach. Oh, uh, there we go, two of the tiniest whiten that I've ever seen. These guys are pretty small. But just in time, maybe, because I think it might be about time to change my live bait. He's always happy to see a fish, unless it's a dogfish. He doesn't like them too much. Neither do I. Anyway, sort these out, and we might check the other rod straight away. Right, I just had a few turns on the handle on this uh, Conti rod here, and I could feel there wasn't a fish on. So I left it out there, and only dragged it in about like 20 yards maybe. I uh, left it for about 10 minutes now I notice the tip of the rod keeps on getting pulled down keep on letting out a bit of line and it keeps on getting pulled down again so getting a little bit hopeful on that one and on the worm rod I think it's starting to uh, speed up a bit now it seems like the uh, the bluey's been picked away at or beaten off on the way in but uh, yeah I'm not sure what to think about that one I've only had a go at the blueies, which is unfortunate because it just made a rather large squid bait. Might have to sneak some bluey back in there. Anyway, we'll change it up and keep going. Right well, guys, as you can see, nice large squid here. And I've cut myself a bait portion out of him there. That's a decent size to put on a pulley panel. I was going to mix a bit of bluey in with it, but I'll just send this one out as is. And then I might just use a bluey on the next cast. But yeah, let's get him on and get him out of there. One more small waiting. These guys are absolutely tiny. Probably some of the smallest I've ever seen. I mean, we're catching. But uh, it'd be nice to get something different. Someone's happy though. Ain't your boy? Anyway, let's get this one home. Right guys, I just noticed the tentacles of the squid flopping everywhere, so I thought I'd use them. What I've done, I've taken the two longer attacking tentacles from the squid, I've stretched them out, and I've cut off the end pieces with the sucker cups on, because they're not that great for the bait. Anyway, I've stretched the rest of them out, and I've cut them into little segments. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tip the, uh, the lug baits and see if that does me any better. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Alright, oh, there we go. Nicely squid tip bits of lug. Let's clip it up and send it. Here we go again. Put up a decent fight. <clears throat> but that is a female fallback radar. And it fell to that nice chunk of squid that we just made up. Now I'm almost sure that I had one on earlier, but I got caught up in a snag. What do you reckon, Baba? It was good, doesn't it? Let's get it up the top. We'll have a proper look and de-hook it. Oh, right, there we go again. We're back at the rod rest. So I didn't really notice a bite as such or any movement on the rod, but what I did notice was the line just started to carry round down towards them anglers down there. And uh, I don't know, sometimes you're better off going to the water's edge to reel in or sometimes you're better off standing up on the bank, but I chose to stand up on the bank. And uh, yeah, he'd swung quite a way around and come closer into shore, but he was down there. So he's taken me for a bit of a walk to get it in. 
But yeah, happy days. Target species achieved. Now this is my first one for the year. So I'm happy with that. It's been a while since I've seen one of these, good few months. And it's a decent sized one. I'm gonna get it unhooked and we'll get it on the measure there. If it's bigger than that measure, we'll get the, the tape out, but it's looking like a legal keeper. But looking at the back end, this one is a female race, so I probably won't keep her. I got a bit bored fishing for these guys last year. I had so many, but like I said, it's been a few months since I've seen one, so. Good to see one again. You can see the gills going away in there. And they've got absolutely wonderful eyes. Look at the eyeballs on them. Lord knows what's going on with them. Or how or what they see. Anyway, it's uncomfortable, so I'll get it unhooked, get it measured, and I'll get it returned. Oh, I'm gonna talk quickly now, because I don't like having them upside down too much. You can see that hooks pretty nicely in the corner of their mouth there. It hasn't gone down too far. So it should be pretty easy to de-hook. Also, just quickly, I'm gonna show, show you every time, in case you haven't seen it before. They haven't got teeth as such, but these bone crusher plates, and they have actually got quite a bite on them. So, uh, do watch your fingers, I always use a de-hooking tool. Let's get a flip back up. There we go. Right, and as you can see, there are big, sharp, spiky fawns coming out of this creature everywhere. Hence the name Fawnback Ray. It's a whole line of them that come along the tail and the back. And yeah, they generally have them all over their face and everywhere else. But if you can find a place between the horns, you can hold them by the cheek here and it doesn't hurt them very much. So, pick it up like that. And it's standing up a minute. But I think we can see she's uh, bigger than the measure there. So she's way bigger than 42. And you can see in the corner there, all skates and rays, minimum size, 40 centimeters. So it would be a legal keeper, but as it's female, it's a lucky day, I'm gonna send her home. A couple of quick pictures, and I'll get her back. All right, nice few pictures taken. I'm gonna get it back. Now from picking it up and measuring it, I'm gonna give it about four to five pounds, this ray. I can't actually weigh it because I know that I've left my scales in my luring bag. I remembered that when I got to the beach. But anyway. Let's try to get a release nicely. Right, I don't think you'll be able to see the line through the camera. Or you might. This line has all of a sudden shot off towards the left as well. This is just a worm right here. It doesn't feel particularly heavy when I tug on the line. But you never know. But I think I'm going to have to pull that one in before I can uh, cast the ray rod back out again. Anyway, we'll find out. Right, here we go, gang. Another nice lump of squid on a pulley panel. Now this is my own squid that I was catching a few months back. You can see it's absolutely stocked full of the ink. Made an absolute mess of my hands there. Anyway, the fish think it's good and tasty. So I'm gonna send it out. Nice little bit of flapping at the end there, bit of attraction maybe. And it's absolutely oozing with goo. Yeah. All right, I send it. So the tide has come in. A considerable way. Um, I'm not even bothering to walk down the bank now to cast. And if I'm honest, just like I said earlier, I feel like if you give it too much of a good cast, you're casting over the fish. I'm just lazily casting out there and I seem to be way better off. Anyway, I'll get this rig clipped up and I think I might have to get my other rod in before I can get this one out. It really has travelled around. 
All right, here we go. That's what it pulled me around. Some of us are slightly larger whiting this time. A bit more junk on them than the last couple. I think I might change the uh, the plane lead here to a grip lead. Stop it carrying around so much. Especially now that I know there are some rays about. Anyway, I'll get these guys off. We'll send that up a bait. I'll see how much more we can do. Get them back in your beddy. <laughs> you like your coat, you don't you? Anyone else take their dog fishing? I know I've seen some of Henry Gilby's videos where he's fishing with his dog. Yeah, he's got a doggy too. You're more beautiful though, Bandit. Yes, you are. Now, would you believe it? Mr. Bandit here is 13 years young. So you're getting grey around the eyes, aren't you? Yeah. Now you're still solid. You're a good boy, ain't you? I think some of the anglers just left from down there. See the swarm of seagulls. No bait left on the floor with them guys around. And here comes one zooming over here. No action on the live bait rod yet. But that's to be expected. And the one that's making me think I should go check it is that big long conti with the big lump of squid on it. I might just be lucky again. Anyway, we'll give it five, ten minutes and we'll go get it. I think I might have been Ray on then. The bait's absolutely shredded. It's either Ray on or I had a lot, a lot of seaweed on the line. I saw some line being taken. But yeah, felt like a lot of weight. And I hit a point, it almost felt like I was snagged. And it, yeah, came like and uh, blank cooks when I come in, but I'll try maybe once, twice more. Well, we're starting to lose the light, and I don't want to keep the dog out into darkness, or at least if I do, not very long. Anyway, let's get on with it, let's see if we can't get one more ray up here. All right, I'm just walking back to the tent, and I spotted something. Now that is a ray egg case. Try to take it home and find out which one. Possibly a fawny. But I'll let you know for sure. What do you guys reckon? Here we go guys, another full house. One, two, three of them there. Yeah, plenty of these about. As per usual. They are a pretty little fish in some ways, but they're just so abundant. Everyone gets bored of them. They are tasty, they are edible. I think all of these ones are a bit small, maybe the one at the bottom, just about passable. But yeah, if you like making fish cakes and whatnot, they can be good. But I'm gonna put all of these ones back. Well, oh, it wouldn't be a fishing trip in Kent without a dogfish, would it? First one of the day. I think I might have one more punt for a ray. And then give it up. Especially if these guys start swarming. That's the last thing you need. Anyway, let's give it one more go. Right, chuck the worms out one more time. And I saw jiggling almost instantly. Now, see if I can try and get him out. He's a pretty lively fella. Yeah, we'll just tip the water out. I've had it in there a while. Look at that. Is that a herring? Is that a shad? I'm not sure. Got beaten up a bit on the way in. 
that's something a bit different, isn't it? I'll get him back in some water and try to look up what he is quickly. Yeah, I really can't work out what he is. I'm going to put him back in case it's a protected species. But I'll just take a couple of pictures so I can work it out later. Happy days on that though. That was a real surprise. So we've got this absolutely chocolate brown water. If it was a little bit clearer, I might think to stick on a set of sabikis. See if I can find any more of whatever that fish was, but I'm not sure. But you do see the birds work working from time to time, so very interesting indeed. Now I know they get a lot of herring off a of deal pier, but that didn't look like a herring to me, but maybe I'm wrong. It's tempting to have one more punt with the worms there. Anyway, my battery's dying, so I'll let you know. All right, everyone, I'm having to finish the episode off at home the next day, so I was mainly filming on my phone, but my phone battery died. I uh, went to go get my GoPro out and realised I'd left my SD card at home like a donut, so I couldn't carry on filming. But uh, the good slash not good news is I didn't catch anything else interesting after the battery ran out yesterday, so we didn't miss anything. But uh, it was a great day out, I had a great day out with a the dog there, caught plenty of fish in front of him, which always makes him happy. Uh, it's great to get the first form back rare of the year, it's a pretty decent sized one as well. And uh, it was great to catch a new species at the end there. So I thought yesterday that it was either a shad or a herring, but after talking to a few people, looking at a few pictures and whatnot, I reckon it is actually a herring. So not as rare a catch, but it is a good indication. I think I might try going back to deal when going on the pier soon and having a go at trying to feather a few of them up, seeing if I can get myself some good free bait. Anyway, uh, the last thing I just wanted to say was about the egg casing that we found yesterday. So this is definitely a ray egg casing. But um, given we have so many fallback rays in Kent, you would have thought it would probably most likely be a fallback ray egg casing. But after looking at some pictures on Google, in fact, even a post that I put up on the uh, Raw Fishing Facebook only a week or two ago, has pictures of all the ray egg casing. And I think this looks more like a blonde ray egg casing. What do you guys think? If you reckon you know, leave us a comment. But uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Hit that sub button if you haven't already. And keep tuned because we'll be back out there again soon.